So let's talk about pre and post installation checks. So the pre installation checks are carried out before the pre installation of MapR. The first test being called Stream, which tests the CPU performance. And the next one being IO Zone, where it actually tests all the input output and um, speed capabilities of your memory. Remember, IO Zone is a destructive test, which means anything written to your disk will be will be lost. So do not run IO Zone test after you install MapR because it's a destructive test by nature. The next one being RPC test that actually test all your network speeds. Uh, uh, how, how good your connection and the speed is between your nodes. The post installation check is, is what you carry out after you install MapR. The first one being DFSIO, which actually tests the IO memories um, speeds. Uh, just remember, uh, DFSIO is a MapReduce job. And RW speed test is another post installation test. And my favorite one is the Terragen and Terrasort. These are MapReduce jobs, but they will actually generate um, lots of data, and then Terrasort actually tries to sort the data. And then remember, if there is any problem with the Terrasort, it actually suggests there is a problem with your hard drive or the controllers. And you can actually fine tune the cluster for a particular type of uh, job you run. And it depends on your business use case. The next one being snapshots. Uh, the first thing you have to notice is that if you want to create snapshots, you need to have the volume privilege. To actually create snapshots and snapshots are stored at the top level of every volume and they are hidden directories and a scheduled snapshot will automatically expire which means the snapshots are deleted after its expiry date and there are two commands in snapshot snapshot the first one being start this will start the mirroring operation between source and destination but when you do mirror push it will only push the updates from all the, from the source volume to all its mirror volume. Uh, the mirror operation is very unique to MapR. I think I think MapR holds some patents on mirroring and snapshotting. And the mirroring is very smart enough to use 70% of your network bandwidth, and the files are compressed by default when it is sent over uh, the network. Remember, Microsoft Azure will charge you for um, if the data comes, if you if the data goes out of your cloud environment. So MapR actually deals with this one very efficiently. And the next one being disk balancer. Remember, you, we use disk balancer and row balancer when we add a lot of nodes or disks. To the MapR cluster and the disk balancer will redistribute the data in all the nodes. Remember, you use always use disk balancer after you have many nodes. And the value of concurrent disk balancer is set between 2 to 30 percent. The role balancer, however, will eventually will distribute only master co containers evenly among all the nodes. It is off by default and it will start after 30 minutes after CLDB and this can be configured. And the delay for active data is for the role balancer spans between 120 seconds and 180 seconds which is from 2 minutes to 30 minutes. Remember this parameter is very very essential and you have to remember this. Let's talk about the job scheduler. A fair scheduler is the default job scheduler in MapR by default. We have other options like first in, first out, and capacity scheduler. And remember, a job can be scheduled and tightly controlled 
and a restriction can be placed on memory and also on CPU. So which means if a user can submit a job, we can actually force the user to use a specific amount of memory and also a specific amount of CPU. So which gives the flexibility of if you want to price your CPU and storage, you can actually do it in this way if, if you have multiple clients accessing the cluster and you have some kind of a business case where you have to charge them. So you can actually charge them based on the memory and also on CPU, which is fantastic. And each user has their own queue to queue up their jobs. And this can be even programmed to have how many apps can be on each queue as well. And the weight can be alerted to a few resources so that different sets of groups can have their different weights and have different change in configuration to access to the resources. So once you make changes to this um, fair scheduler.xml and the allocation files gets reloaded every 10 seconds, so you can actually make changes on the fly. Thank you.